quickly turn our attention now to Harrismith. This is where police are on high alert uh, in that area that's uh, in the free state this morning as violent uh, delivery service uh, protests are flaring up there. The N3 highway was closed to traffic on Wednesday after residents blocked the road with stones and burning tires, demanding that President Saul Ramaphosa address their service delivery demands. Now, the Harrismith community wants to be removed from the Maluti Apufung municipality due to the lack of services there. Now, the protests have been taking place for the past three weeks and uh, dozens have been arrested as well. All right, let's get an update now from our reporter uh, on the scene of these protests, uh, Linda Mnisi, who joins us live now. Linda, very good morning to you. I just had a conversation with the MEC of Cocta in the Free State, MEC Ngangisa, who says that uh, the municipality of Maluti Apufung is not a failed municipality. The problems there are not insurmountable. I suppose that would be in some way a response to protesters that uh, they be delinked from this municipality. They want to be removed from this municipality. I wonder how that response will sit with them. Well, Paul, it kind of reminds me of the deputy president answering uh, to the NCOP about, of course, these municipalities and, of course, ESCOM issues, uh, saying that Malutia Pofung, when it comes to electricity alone, has had issues. And now ESCOM will have to, you know, bill and, and collect revenue directly for itself instead of uh, doing that through uh, the municipality, which kind of gives you an indication of the amount of issues that uh, the municipality is facing. It's said to be owing uh, the power utility over 5 billion rand. So at this point in time, it seems their issues are, of course, piling up. But earlier on, we spoke about the issue around the, 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 the taxi driver or the person that's said to have passed. And I had a brief conversation with uh, the, the, the SAPS spokesperson who indicates to me that there hasn't been any reports of that nature that they have received. In fact, they have been receiving uh, updates, hourly updates, and at this point they haven't received any of that information. From where he's standing, he says he can only dismiss it for now until, of course, Proper, a proper report has been submitted uh, to him. So what we're seeing right now, as you can see there on your screen, some of those SAPS members are wearing protective gear. This car that they're standing next to Poli has just arrived, uh, you know, right now, uh, carrying all of these protective equipment. We've also been seeing quite a number of vehicles, which uh, perhaps uh, are those of authorities. So. It seems as though police are on the ground trying to monitor the situation as police also gear themselves up to get into this community and try, of course, to disperse the crowds that have been uh, disturbing all these roads. It was still on uh, the N5, which has also uh, been affected early this morning. The N3 was quite clear. So if these visuals are anything to go by, it looks like police are going to be uh, doing a lot of work. They've, they've got a lot in their hands right now as they're dealing with protesters who are relentless. This is the third week only of this protest, as we're told by its leaders. Linda, it does look like um, the police are preparing for the worst uh, and I suppose the protesters on the other hand as well, uh, they're not going to be standing idly by because uh, ultimately what they want is for the president of the country to come and address them directly uh, to hear their concerns. Linda, as I let you go... I want to turn your attention now to a completely different story that you've been covering in the area of KZN. In a moment, I'll be speaking to MEC Ravi Pillay about uh, the um, area of Guatlat, the so-called Diamond Rush. Uh, just bring us up to speed as you left that area yesterday. What was the situation there? People still uh, continuing to dig for these so-called uh, diamonds? Does it look like uh, they... 
are going to listen to what uh, people like Ravi Pillay had to say to them uh, on the day that uh, they visited that area. Well, Tolly, you'll remember that that MEC Ravi Pillay pleaded with the public to be patient uh, as they do more work and tests and get those samples. But from what we saw yesterday, the residents there continuing to dig as if nothing happened the previous day. There's a sense of ownership that is coming from the residents there, and particularly because they feel like that, those stones, if they are to be uh, you know, discovered as precious stones or even a diamond, is, of course, uh, their only ticket out of poverty. I followed one gentleman yesterday who has also discovered some shiny rocks. Uh, he's a 34-year-old young man saying that, well, at this point, he's even sold some of the stones that he's got in there. He's one of the lucky ones, Koli, uh, who's getting more and more of these stones. And I asked him about Youth Day, and I said to him, what does this day mean for you when you're spending most of your time digging for what you believe is a diamond? He says, well, I grew up in this area. I've lived 34 years of my life. Our parents died in this community. There isn't really much development. We have been struggling with access to proper water for the five, past five years. He estimated about uh, five years, saying that it is, of course, a struggle. So this moment is their moment for them, saying that if, any, if these are discovered to be true diamonds, they would also uh, you know, come together to build their community because they have been struggling together. There are no job opportunities. There is nothing for them. They often have to leave the village and go to other towns for employment. He says if there are no odd jobs, he survives by a small garden that he has at home. That garden feeds his family together with his sisters. So essentially, June 16 meant nothing if they are still hungry. The previous day, the president had addressed the nation about COVID-19 regulations, moving the country to a lead level three, gatherings being an issue. And we're seeing very little mask wearing, which gives you an indication of the level of desperation from those people to get out of the, po out of the poverty that they're facing. Polly? Thank you so much uh, for explaining that to us uh, so well. That's our reporter in Harry Smith covering a completely different story. Very busy man in the last couple of days.